Thank you for worshiping with us at Jackson Chapel Sammy Church, located at 418 Water Street in Cortland, Alabama, where our pastor is Reverend David T. Young Sr. Please join our service already in progress. rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. If you've got a grandparent in here, say happy grandparents day. Turn to them and say happy grandparents day. Amen. Yeah, celebrating celebrating the wisdom of the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we'll have the choir come and render a selection. Amen.
Saints, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and the earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's, amen. It's praying time. Amen. We should remember those who have paved the way today, celebrating Grandparents' Day. I think of my grandmother, and I was thinking just on yesterday how quiet she was. But one thing about her quietness, when she did speak, uh, she had something to say. She did not use a lot of frivolous words, but she would use words of meaning. And when she prayed, you felt the prayer, because I know it was her prayers that kept me, amen? And many of the prayers of your grandparents have kept you. Let us pray. Dear and gracious Father, we come this morning thanking you for your many blessings, Lord. Realizing, Father, we are living in a transitioning age, Lord, where we are moving from one degree of grace to another, Lord. We pray for the family of the Queen of England, Lord, who uh, gave up her battle with this life on this side of the river. We ask, O oh, Father, that you would bless them as they memorialize her and remember that she was a great lady that uh, did a lot of things to help a lot of people, Lord. We ask, O oh, Father, that you would bless our churches everywhere. Bless the men of God that stand to speak a word unto their people, Lord. We ask, O oh, Father, that you would bless those who are sick and shut in, Lord, and those that are suffering from illnesses. I ask you to bless my uh, friend Craig in Missouri, Lord, who is going through chemotherapy. And uh, we ask you, O oh, Father, that you would bless the Reverend Lawson Fletcher, Lord, who is recovering and going through uh, uh, treatment, Lord. And we ask, O oh God, that you would be with him and let him know that all of his serving has not been in vain. We ask, O oh Father, that as you move forward on this day, uh, let us move with you, Lord, that we will be better men and women, better boys and girls as a result of having given our lives to you. And we ask it all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
Jones comes and renders the scripture for us this morning. We want to say that we are recognizing our ushers today. Amen. Don't they look lovely? Amen. They're serving. Amen. They're, they're serving and rocking. Amen. Praise God. I thought they were going to rock right on out the door, boy. They was, they, they could have it back then. God is good. We thank you all for your service and all what you do to make this place a, ple a better place, a more pleasant place. Now, Reverend Jones will come and share the scriptures with us. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Our amen. scripture reading is coming from Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 through 32. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 through 32. And it's read, really, then would I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you in heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statue. And ye shall keep my judgment and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your father. And ye shall be my peoples and I will be your God. God. I would also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the coin, and will increase it, and lay no payment upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways, and your doing they were not good, and shall loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquity and for your abomination. Not for your sake do I this, says the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confound for your own ways, O house of Israel.
you find that you're still here. Amen. Through it all, I made it. It was by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. We give honor to our Heavenly Father today who doeth all things well to his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ our Redeemer, who died on Calvary, that we might have life. And not only will we have it, but we might have it more abundantly. Amen. We give honor to his precious Holy Spirit, who is our sustainer 
For the Bible says he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him. Is that right? Amen. To Pastor Grissom, to Pastor Bankhead, to Reverend Jones, and to this body composed of all officers and members and friends and acquaintances. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to stand one more time behind this sacred desk. For there is a word. All right. For there is a word. From the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 37, beginning at verse number 1. Ezekiel. Chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. And it reads as follows. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in that open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came, to bone, came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And then shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know 
that I am the Lord, have spoken it and performed, uh, performed it, said the Lord. This is God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, amen. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, our Father, we come now as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Asking Heavenly Father that you will give me strength to be able to stand now and proclaim your word. For as I stand realizing that I can't do anything until you come. Oh, feed us now, Holy Spirit. Feed us with your word. Feed us until we want no more. Oh, Father, we ask that you would touch now the hearts of these, your people. That they may prepare for us your word and let me receive it and that it will be written up on the table of their hearts and then Father we pray that as we receive your word that our lives will be transformed now I ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight for you Lord are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name they said, Amen. 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 We want to talk to you this morning for just a few moments. When dry bones are renewed. Amen. When dry bones are renewed. Listening to the song selection, first, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And then, understanding that we can't run and we can't hide. And then, finding out that all of us have had some dark days, but we're still here. I am convinced that at some point in our lives that we have all found ourselves in a place where we felt dejected, rejected, tired, distressed, depressed, burdened, and completely all dried up and dried out. I wish I had somebody. In other words, just feeling like we have nothing left because the world has dealt us what we call a massive blow and we're having trouble recovering. A place where all hope is gone. Our joy is depleted. Our peace is a thing of the past. In this place, it seems like every time we take one step forward, we take three steps backwards. My friends, Ezekiel describes this place as a valley of dry bones. In this valley, it is described as a people that have allowed all life to be stripped away from them. 
They found themselves, uh, Pastor Bankhead, in a need of renewal. See, because I found that when we get to the point where our license is about to expire, the days started to creep up on us and the time comes when we have to make that trip down to the DMV or to get online or whatever we do now to get those licenses renewed. And the reason why at some point it reaches its expiration date. And in my research, I found that that happens often to us on our Christian journey. Our actions and our ways and our commitment and all of these things seem to expire. In our text, the great prophet Ezekiel speaks of a graveyard experience. He found a lot of people that had expired. They had allowed the things of the world to put them in a position where they felt like they were all by themselves. And isn't it strange that there was somebody on the outside had to recognize that the bones were dry because I believe that those dry bones were content with being dried up. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I believe they were content because they all laid there and the Bible says that as Ezekiel looked, he saw all of these bones. And he said there were very many. And they were very dry. when he was taken down in this valley. No sign of life. No sign of joy, of joy. No sign of marrow. And I thought that it was necessary to use that particular word because all of us know that bones contain marrow. Is that right? And I, in my research, I found that the absence of bone marrow is a sign that there is little or no existence at all. Bone marrow plays a, a very important role in our mere existence. And, and according to uh, my research, the essential function of bone marrow is to create blood cells and platelets. Marrow helps in growth fights infection, help keep sufficient amounts of oxygen and tissues in our organs. So why all of this scientific facts? Well, see, we can substitute all of these things that I just talked about and replace them with broken relationships. Replace them with bad habits. Replace them with, with uh, infected, infected thinking. Replace them with the don't care mindset. What I'm saying to us today is that these things will cause us to become dried up. Because our marrow has been depleted. Our marrow has been all drawn out. Let me put this in layman's terms. The marrow of prayer life. The marrow of true worship. The marrow of peace. The marrow of joy, the marrow of love, all of these things, once it has left, the bones dry up. Right. 
Oh, I wish I had somebody. Ezekiel saw these bones and they showed no signs of life at all. 2020, when the COVID or I guess you could say the pandemic came, many became dry. became fearful, lost their faith, lost their commitment, lost their will to worship God. We found that during this time, the storms of life came raging and we were battered like an angry sea. But in the midst of this, we forgot that God was still God. He is and he always will be the author and the finisher of our faith. We saw when our bones became dry, our commitment changed. Coming to church became a secondary uh, object and everything else was primary. The people of God had become dry in worship, dry in praise, dry in singing, dry in prayer, dry in attitude, dry in relationship, not just dry, but very dry. I wish I had somebody. So now, we have gotten an understanding of the issue that Ezekiel faced. He walked, and Katie walked through the midst of these bones. God asked him, Son of man, can these bones live? Sometimes I get up in the morning. All right now. Can't hardly roll out the bed. Okay. And I ask myself, Rob, can these bones live? Trying to roll out and when I first get up, I I can't stand up straight like a used to. But after a little while, everything started to working together. My mind has to tell the rest of the body that you're still here. And then I'm able to move on. And Ezekiel replied to the Lord, only you know because what I see it's just a bunch of dry bones. Yeah, yeah. In other words, he was looking from his point of view. And in his eyes, he could see no hope. So God told him, Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy. In other words, don't give up. But keep on preaching. Because Ezekiel saw some folk that had all of their best days behind them. But God saw people that if they would change their ways, all of their best days were before them. He told them to prophesy unto the bones. And he said, once you do that, you will see that I am God. The Bible says that he told him he would call 
the sinews to come on. He's going to put marrow back on the inside. Oh, I wish I had somebody. He's going to put uh, the meat on him and put the skin on him. If he would just prophesy. And then he said, once you do that, then I'm going to put breath in him. Oh, I wish I could get a witness. So Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded. I kept on preaching. But it didn't seem like nothing was going to happen. But he kept on preaching. He said, it may seem dry right now, but he kept on preaching. And the Bible said, because of his commitment, suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly, Ezekiel heard some noise. Suddenly, Ezekiel saw some movement in the valley. Suddenly, there was a sign of life. Tell me, Ezekiel, what did you see? So I began to visualize what Ezekiel saw. And uh, first I started looking at my feet, but I said, no. It didn't start right there. Right. Because if you come from the feet up, it's almost impossible to get all the way to the fingers. Right. But uh, when I looked and I saw the finger bone, yes, the finger bone connected to the hand bone. Yeah. And the hand bone connected to the arm bone. And the arm bone connected to the elbow. Ain't God a good God? The upper bone connected to the shoulder bone. Ain't God a good God? The shoulder bone connected to the neck bone. The neck bone connected to the rib bone. The rib bone connected to the back bone. The back bone connected to the hip bone. The hip bone connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone connected to the knee bone. The knee bone connected to the leg bone. The leg bone connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone connected to the foot bone. Ain't God alright? What you telling me? That one day. Yeah. 
God before me who can be against me when dry bones are renewed things begin to change folk begin to worship choirs begin to sing officers and members begin to pray folks start telling somebody else somebody tell somebody else somebody tell somebody else and after a while after a while God will say this is my people I'm going to place you back where you need to be you can come on into your own territory you can come on in and recapture what the devil stole from you see because nobody has to stay in the situation that you're in you don't have to stay dried up because somebody made you mad you don't have to stay dried up because you don't like who's standing at the door you don't have to stay dried up because you don't want to sing and don't want nobody else to sing you don't want to you don't have to stay dried up because you want to not go to Sunday school but somebody else want to go the same thing that God do for somebody else he can do the same thing for you he said here's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways he said then will I hear from heaven and he said I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land the worst thing that Ezekiel saw because you know what destroyed marrow disease and I'm not talking about a physical disease I'm talking about a spiritual disease I wish I had somebody because we allow ourselves to be spiritually depleted. But I tell you what, I dare you to try God. I dare you to, to tell him, I'm down here in this valley. And I realize now I'm dry. But I know that you are able. Because we've heard the songs. We can't run. We can't hide. We've heard the song that all we got to do is say, pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, please don't pass me by. And then we've heard the song that said we have heartaches. We've had disappointments. But bless be God. And y'all gonna y'all about to give him a hand clap of praise, but bless be God, I'm still here. If for nothing else, if you don't want to praise him for nothing else, you ought to praise him because you're still here. Because he blessed you. Y'all, he blessed you to let you see another day. And the songwriter said, he kept your arm wrapped all around me. You never left me. You never left me. And then the songwriter said, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. And then he turned around and said, Brother, you're going to like this part. Ooh-wee! Another blessing. I wish I had somebody. Y'all ain't got to be happy for me. I'm happy for myself. But, 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 but I can't be happy for you. But ooh-wee! Another blessing. God has blessed me. He kept his arm wrapped around me. So at this time, we're going to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. And there you be anyone, there be anyone today, you ready to make your recommitment to God? Or if you haven't joined the church and you want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we, this invitation is for you. We don't never know. We don't never know when our time might be up. We don't never know when our number may be called. But we're reminded that we need to be ready. And don't be ashamed. There's no age limit. There's no time limit. But God, he's able to do 
They say it's abundantly be above what we could ever think or ask. So we invite you today. So there be one. And there be others. The time is now. I'm telling you. The time is now. Amen. We give God praises today. Because he's still in the blessing business. I don't know about you, but like I said, I've, I've been in some dry places and found my bone felt like I was all dried up. But I found that if, even if you have to stoop way down, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus can pick you up. Amen. Amen. Y'all want to join me before y'all sing? Y'all going to still sing now. Y'all come on, but we, we got something we need to do. All right. Give God a hand clap for praise. Mm -hmm. I just saw this little man somewhere. Where did I see you? Huh? At Lindsay? Okay, I talked to him. All right. All right. We thank God today. And y'all know, y'all know me. And one thing that I do, I, I find that I don't need to speak for nobody. But I, what I want to do is ask you a question. And then we can go from there. What is your desire today? Come back to the Lord God. Amen. Come back to the Lord God. He wants to rededicate, rededicate himself. To the Lord, and that, that's the most important thing that we can ever do in our life is to rededicate ourselves. So, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions Do you believe in the Holy Trinity and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen. All right. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Yes. Do All you right. can now, at this time, accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God because the main thing where it tells us in Romans 10 and verse 9 if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead then we shall be saved yeah. and by you standing here today you making this humble confession not only before, before God but before his people as well and we thank God that you have come yeah. and to Rededicate and recommit yourself to the work of the Lord. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to speak. First of all, my name is uh, Brother Marvin Orr. Yeah, all right. I used to be a member of Jackson Chapel. Yeah. I changed my membership right. to uh, Macedonia Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Decatur. But now I'm bringing my membership back here to Jackson yeah. Chapel. Yeah. You know, uh, as I look out across here, I see a lot of faces. And I see some faces that I, I hadn't seen in a while, and some of them I ain't, probably ain't gonna never see again. Uh, you know, the Lord has blessed us well, Amen. and he has kept us. Uh, all the time, mostly when I pray, I always ask in my prayer, how can we say we love God? For whom we have never laid our eyes on in our life. And don't love our brothers and sisters who we see daily. You got to love your brothers and sisters also. You can say you love God for whom you have never seen. But don't you see your brothers and sisters walk past them each day and you don't love them. I thank the pastor for giving me this opportunity to say something. We thank God for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask these guys, we're going to lay hands on you, and we want to pray that God will continue to hold you steadfast in his care and that your recommitment and your rededication will be a beacon for others that may come right. and walk this same path. Right. 
Father, we pray now that you would touch Marvin and Father, and continue to hold him, continue to keep him. Mm -hmm. And Father, we know that as he makes this step, mm -hmm. the devil is not going to stop, mm -hmm. but he's going to come after him. But we realize, <coughs> Father, that as we stand here with him today, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So Father, we just pray now that you will wrap your arm and protection around him. And not only that, Father, but that you will touch all these members of Jackson Chapel, that we may be a beacon of light that will help him in this path. Father, we want to welcome him. We want to hold on to him. And Father, we want to nurture him and keep him. Father, for we know that if we walk by your faith and not by our sight, that we will make it. In one of those days, Father, you, we will hear you say, well done. Yeah. Well done, our good and faithful servants. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher. We'll make you rule over many. Yeah. We thank you now for his life, and we thank you, Father, for his commitment. So now, Father, we just say thank you. Thank you Lord. We thank you right now you. for bringing one of Jackson Chapel back to the fold. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, say amen. Amen. Just say amen again. Amen. You know, we can do A lot of things we can go through a lot of processes but what happened here today this is why we do what we do this is why we do what we do because when someone rededicates or someone comes to the Lord the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven. Yeah. And when we have true worship, these are the kind of things that transpire. So we want to say we thank God for this. And, and I'm just glad that God allowed me to be a part Amen. of this. And as everybody out there sitting should feel exactly the same way. Amen. 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 I hope you have enjoyed our service with Pastor David T. Young, and we'll see you next week at the same time. May God bless you.